This program is made possible by the loyal financial support of the friends and partners of Family Policy Institute. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So good evening and welcome to the program. I'm speaking to Haley McNamara, uh, who's based in London at the moment, and she's from the International Coalition to End Sexual Exploitation. Haley, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you so much for having me. So Haley, you you're part of the National Center of Sexual Exploitation that's based in Washington DC with Dawn Hawkins, which is a good friend of mine. And uh, I contacted her a few days ago to ask her for research and studies that have been done uh, that make the link between pornography and violence against women, well, women and children. And she sent me some good stuff and um, a, a member of parliament made a speech in parliament on the issue of gender-based violence in South Africa uh, using that... Uh, that research and that social data, which is very, very powerful and, and does make the connection. But I, you know, as an expert, Haley, I wanted to speak to you and I thank you for joining me from London to do this interview. But can you, from you know, your expertise in the work you've done in the United States and now doing in the UK, can you talk about the research and the social data that shows that pornography definitely uh, contributes to harm of women, social degradation, and violence. Yes, absolutely. Well, exactly as you said, there is a growing and significant body of research showing that pornography has connections with sexual aggression and sexual violence. Um, and the reason for that is because pornography actually has a very real impact on the brain. Um, one of those impacts is it can create what's called an escalating pattern watching pornography might, after a period of time, veer into more uh, violent material, more uh, degrading themes, such as incest is a very real and troubling theme, or themes of uh, sex with minors or child sexual abuse themes. Um, and, and then for some individuals who watch it, they can escalate into wanting to act out the pornography that they have been watching. And that's troubling for a few different reasons. There has been great research on the actual content of pornography. Uh, for those people who have not been exposed to it don't realize that between 88 and 94% of scenes actually portray physical violence or aggression from a man to a woman. And in that in pornography, 87% of the time, uh, sorry, excuse me, 95% of the time, women respond to that violence with expressions of pleasure. So pornography is literally teaching that gender-based violence or sexual violence is something that people like, and it's something that you can do with impunity. Yeah. So knowing that the message that pornography sends, it's not that surprising that studies, even a meta-analysis of uh, from seven different countries, found that watching pornography is significantly associated with increased sexual aggression. Okay, so Haley, that thanks for that. It makes a lot of sense. It really does because there's a lot of groups here in South Africa that that you know deny links between pornography and, and sexual violence against women and children. They say, well, it's just in, innocent fun and it helps them in their marriages or their relationships. Uh, but I've seen tons of research from all over the world and particularly from the United States making that connection. And what you just said, uh, you know, that once people use pornography, they have to go on to harder, more harder stuff and more um, you know, things that we can't even mention here. And it's a progression. They get addicted to it. But most importantly, Haley, is that their minds are being shaped. You know, it affects the brain. In, and, and then obviously the way they see women and now they've been trained to look at women in a particular way because the pornography has done that to them. Um, so is there any real cases that you can talk of where men or young boys, because a lot of young boys are 
watching pornography on their device, devices here in South Africa. But do you know in particular cases where men or young boys have consumed pornography and then acted that out and harmed women or children? Yes, unfortunately, we hear those kinds of stories frequently. Uh, we've even seen, especially in the U.S., but we think it's a global called child-on-child -child harmful sexual behavior. And what this is, is typically cases of young boys, maybe 12, 14, 16 years old, who have watched pornography and then act it out onto another child. And we've had We've had uh, the case of a 10-year-old boy who acted out and sexually harmed um, a neighbor girl because he had become addicted to pornography. And, you know, this same pattern happens with adults as well, but especially with children, it's just so clear that, you know, they had never even had a kiss before, but all that they were exposed to was pornography and it caused them to act out and sexually harm someone. It's a, it's a real tragedy because it harms, it's harmful to the person who was exposed to pornography. Um, and then it's also harmful to the victim. Absolutely. Now, you know, talking about that child on child sexual violence, that's, that's a huge problem here in South Africa. And the reason for that is that young children from ages eight years old upwards have, have uh, devices, uh, handheld devices, smartphones, and just about every one of them can access pornography, even hardcore pornography, quite easily. And it is having an effect on them. Tell us what the research shows when young boys or, and even young girls are growing up on this diet of pornography, what happens to them when they become start becoming young adults? Hmm. Well, you're absolutely right that they're being exposed at such young ages. Uh, I know in the US, majority of college age students were exposed before they were 13 years old. And a lot of parents don't realize this because you know they think that they're raising the child with maybe certain values or that they're protecting them, but the pornography industry has algorithms that are trying to seek out young people in order to so, uh, so children really are being targeted by the pornography industry. And it has many effects. We're seeing not only uh, does it increase the likelihood of believing rape myths, such as that women enjoy rape, um, but it also, it has negative impacts on their working memory, their ability to focus in school. It has problems with uh, body image uh, and, and certainly the ability to even form a lasting and healthy relationship. Thankfully, many people are able to recover um, from pornography addiction or long-time pornography use. Our brains are really uh, remarkable that way but it does have a very significant impact uh, on the whole person, especially if they're watching it from a young age. Absolutely. Lady, so, you know, you work with research and real life cases in the United States, and now you're doing that in the UK at the National Center, which is now the International Center to End Sexual Exploitation of Women. So you know a lot on this, you're an expert in this field. And I wanted to ask you, if you look at South Africa, we have high rates terrible, tragic high rates of sexual violence against women and children. It's called gender-based violence here, and people are tearing their hair, hair out. Governments having all kinds of meetings. They're allocating money to fight this pandemic or this curse or this scourge, whatever you want to call it, but they're not making much headway. I believe that unless they tackle the pornography issue, unless they tackle the prostitution issue, where we have women standing, women and young girls standing on the side of the street, selling themselves to whoever comes along. And this kind of portrays women in a certain way. Now, I can't see how we can tackle this issue of gender-based violence unless we tackle the issue of the social degradation of women. And that is pornography, that is prostitution. Do you agree with that? And if you do, how do we then combat that? How do we begin to uh, change and reverse what is happening in South Africa? Yes, I, I absolutely agree. And it all comes down to prevention because you can, uh, you know, restore and heal someone who has been sexually assaulted. You can rescue and 
uh, restore someone who has been sex trafficked or prostituted, but you really have to try to prevent that from ever happening in the first place. And so, like exactly as you said, one of the key things is to address the issue of pornography because as we've been discussing the research it does increase uh the likelihood that someone will be sexually aggressive sexually violent to another person so if we can prevent that from ever happening that is going to save countless people from being in pain later on and then similarly we want to prevent um issues like prostitution by sending out messages about the harms of sex buying and that you know, men should not be engaging in that behavior. It's harmful to the women, to society, and even to themselves. Uh, yeah, so absolutely. I think we need to not, we should continue to help victims who've already been harmed, but we need to take a step back and look at what is our culture saying about women and their value or about men and their ability to be honorable um, and to not uh, harm someone else. And I think those prevention messages are very important. Okay. Um, so would you recommend to our government banning pornography, prohibiting online pornography, getting rid of sexually explicit images in the media and in advertising so as to raise and elevate uh, the dignity and the status of women, uh, and would you recommend that our government do not decriminalize prostitution because that is going to just add and fuel the violence against women and children? Right. As for for banning pornography, the the benefits of that is that you can really prevent your society from following in the footsteps of a lot of countries like America that have been completely decimated by pornography, high rates of sexual violence, child on child uh, violence, et cetera. So I think there, that is something that should really be considered. And at minimum, uh, there should be laws put in place to make sure that children are not exposed to it. Uh, and then definitely with prostitution, the full decriminalization will only increase the amount of prostitution that's happening. It'll send a message that men can buy access to a woman's body, which is completely the opposite of the message that we want to be sending, that women are real human beings who do not have to be bought and sold as, as objects. So definitely the full decriminalization of prostitution is a really harmful policy. In other countries where it's been tried, it's led to increased prostitution and increased sex trafficking as well. Absolutely. And so Haley, I wanna thank you because I look at research around the world, pornography is now called violence against women. And, and, and that's precisely what it is. It contributes and fuels harm uh, against women and children. And uh, so I wanna thank you for coming onto this program, for sending me such great research and data uh, you know, proving the correlation between uh, pornography and sexual violence against women and children. And uh, I wish you well in your work, you, Dawn Hawkins in Washington, D.C. Uh, we thank you for the global summits you have annually uh, in Washington. So I, I want to thank you guys for the great work you're doing. You're such a help and blessing to us here in South Africa. Thank you for coming on to the program. <music>